Hi and welcome to day two, lesson three. And in this lesson, we're going to look at safety nets and other tools either provided by the ATM system or used in conjunction with the ATM system. Now, if all goes well, then the ATC will have provided a really good plan for traffic for the day and there'll be no problems. However, occasionally pilots and controllers can make mistakes. And so their safety nets in particular are there as an added backup. So let's now go and take a look at some of those. So in this lesson, we'll be looking at the purpose of safety nets, slide three in the first section. And then in the second section, we'll be looking at ATC support and monitoring tools, starting on slide 14. And state the purpose of STCA. So short-term conflict alerts generate a visual an audible alarm at the CWP, that is the controller work position, when two aircraft are likely to have a loss of separation and be in danger of collision. Short-term alerting systems are used in busy controlled airspace because longer-term warnings would occur too often. Frequent false alarms can condition the controllers to ignore them or treat them with less urgency, which is a result we want to avoid. This diagram here shows a short-term conflict alert. Note the leader lines, which project the position of the aircraft 30 seconds in the future. And the fact that both the altitudes are converging, so even though this one is at flight level 236 and this one is at flight level 230, the arrows indicate this one is climbing and this one is diving, and they will be at the same altitude if action is not taken. State the purpose of MSOR, Minimum Safe Altitude Warning. The ATM system maps are programmed with minimum safe altitudes for different geographic areas, reflecting that area's terrain. The aircraft must not fly below the MSA minimum safe altitudes. For example, here we can see that the minimum safe altitude is 6,000 feet. Note the altitude of the aircraft label in alarm. The MSA is 6,000 feet, but the aircraft is already at 5,500 feet and descending. Note also the ATM system must have the correct current QNH for the sector. If it does not have this, it will not be able to correct the aircraft reported altitude and MSOR will be off. State the purpose of APW, Area Proximity Warning. This provides a warning of aircraft about to enter restricted airspace. The restricted area could be a military exercise area where live firing is carried out or where military aircraft are flying fast and unpredictably. So here is the restricted area and here is an unauthorized aircraft about to enter it. State the purpose of runaway incursion alerts. So runaway incursion alerting systems warn against any unauthorized vehicle or object on an active runway. Aircraft move at high speed during landing and takeoff and serious accidents have occurred due to collisions on the ground. Alerting systems include radar, cameras, and noise and vibration sensors. And that includes, well, that concludes the material for this section. So go back, revise those slides, and then answer the revision questions on slides 10 to 13. Pause the video until you're happy to continue. Mike, 
In the last section of this lesson, we'll look at some more support and monitoring tools available to air traffic controllers. Again, these are designed to assist with traffic flow and maintain separation. Explain ATC support and monitoring tools, MTCD or medium term conflict detection. Medium term conflict detection probes allow ATC to look further into the future than short term conflict alerts allowed. They are used in oceanic flight where continuous surveillance tracking is not possible and conflict resolution must be anticipated much earlier. Communication may also be less reliable in these areas and it may take longer to send instructions to either aircraft. Explain ATC support and monitoring tools. AMAN, this, that is the Arrivals Manager. The Arrivals Manager is an important tool for assisting ATC in creating an efficient flow of air traffic. It is used to set the arrival time of the aircraft at the start of the approach procedure, near the end of their trip. Once the required time of arrival at the final en route waypoint is given to the pilot, they can enter it into their FMS and the aircraft will fly itself at the correct speed to achieve that target and therefore the flow of traffic will be maintained. On this slide we can see that AMAN has scheduled this flight, RLK 806, to arrive at this waypoint at a time of 1.55. And if the aircraft arrives at that time, it will maintain the sequence with the rest of these aircraft flowing in. The STAR is a standard arrival. So what RLK 806 is aiming to do is to arrive at this waypoint at 1.55, and then it will begin its standard arrival procedure, which will join the end of its en route flight plan to the beginning of the active runway. Explain DMAN or departure manager. So DMAN is used for managing departures. It must work in conjunction with the arrivals manager because arrivals must always take priority. Any delays if possible must occur on the ground before takeoff. If they occur in the air, they may require holding patterns and then fuel usage, costs and environmental impact all go up. So if we can anticipate a delay, we will try and delay the aircraft on the ground if possible. Explain uh, surface movement ground control system, SMGCS. The SMGCS is designed for controlling ground movements at large airports, especially in poor visibility. They usually combine some form of surface movement radar with an increased level of runway and taxiway lighting. And this particular diagram represents a surface movement radar display you can see an aircraft target taxiing on the runway and you can also see an airport vehicle indicated here as well so the controllers if they can't see the airport visually they can still track the vehicles and the aircraft using the surface movement radar In times of low visibility, the aircraft operations switch to a tighter level of control to maintain safety. And this mode of operation is referred to as LVO or low visibility operations. This usually means less aircraft movements are permitted and only specially equipped aircraft and vehicles may be able to operate at these times. Explain CLAM, 
CLAM is Cleared Level Adherence Monitoring. And the aircraft clearance received from ATC includes a cleared flight level. CLAM monitors the flight to ensure the aircraft does not deviate from the cleared flight level. And if the aircraft does deviate significantly from that cleared flight level, it generates an alarm. Explain RAM. RAM acts in a similar way as CLAM, but with regard to the lateral route rather than the flight level. Again, it raises an alarm if the aircraft deviates significantly beyond the allowable limits for the planned route. Explain CORA 1. So this uh, CORA is Conflict Resolution Advisory. And if it's CORA 1, it identifies potential future conflicts and allows controllers to test their intended instructions prior to issuing them. And then we have CORA 2. So CORA 2 identifies potential future conflicts and provides one or more resolution advisories ready made for the controllers to select. So CORA 2 actually calculates a number of different ways to avoid the conflict and then offers that to the controller. All right, that completes the content for this section. So go back, revise those slides, then do the revision questions, slides 25 to 34. Pause the video until you're happy with that material and then continue.